All right, welcome back. So now we're going to, <clears throat> I've just loaded up my uh, 2019 and we're going to load up our uh, crate texture. Uh, we're gonna make a crate and uh, put it on there and marvel at our creativity. So this is this is Maya. It's, uh, I believe the newest version of Maya. I've used some old versions. I used 20, uh, 2009 for the longest. And there's a lot of really neat uh, updates to Maya. And even though Autodesk owns both Maya and 3ds Max, uh, thankfully they've kept both of them separate so the people that are used to either can uh, continue to use it so it doesn't create some kind of Frankensteinian uh, amalgam of both of the programs, which would be horrible. So we'll just make a, um, this is our pop-up, um, I'll do an intro. This is our pop-up menu, everything uh, you can do, uh, you'll generally do through the pop-up menu. I'm a particular fan of the pop-up menu. Some people are not, they want to use uh, um, the stuff up here. And uh, there's times when you have to, um, but uh, in general, it's so nice to have this uh, anywhere. Um, and you can, uh, in general, you want to have show all. Sometimes they're not always on. Um, just a little few things about Maya. We have, uh, this is our grid. Uh, and in order to move around, you're going to get very used to the navigation of Maya. Um, to move the screen around, the object around, you use your middle, you have, hold down Alt and your middle mouse button, and you move it around. Uh, to rotate, you'll hold down Alt and your left mouse button. And to zoom in, you're going to use uh, your Alt and your right mouse button. And with all those, you can uh, navigate around quite easily. Um, in general, um, everything is done in games just with polygon primitives. Uh, there's some places we'll use uh, NURBs and convert them to polys. Some places we'll use polys and go into subdiv surfaces. But uh, a lot of the, um, the objects are very, uh, tend to be simple because we need that simple for the for the engine um, and um, strangely enough all, a lot of objects um, start just with a simple cube and you do your modifications to it as you'll see in the video mandatory Maya tools so this is our object it's green like that when it's selected um, and we are outside of the object um, which is um, component mode is off, and the components are um, are your your faces, your vertices, and your edges. And uh, by the way, it's one vertex, two vertices. Uh, it's so hard to listen to people when they say vertexes or um, one vertices, one vertice, two vertices. It's, that's not. It just makes my skin crawl. <laughs> um, and here's our tools over here. Um, again, it's really, really good to use uh, key commands. And I have a, a key command uh, PDF that everyone should have. Your, um, your select tool is Q, your move tool is W, and your rotate tool is E, and your sizing tool is R. Don't ask me why R is not rotate, but I think you just have to live with it. Um, so that's, those are they. Um, this is in shaded mode right now. When we have a texture on, uh, you'll be able to see it. Um, three is subdivs. Four uh, is wireframe mode. So we have no textures on it. Very important to use this uh, wisely for selecting uh, vertices or uh, faces so you know which ones you have selected. Five is shaded, six will be textured when we have the texture in there. On the left side we have um, our outliner and you can turn on and off the outliner but when you're doing games <clears throat> it's really good to know uh, exactly what you have over here because you want it to be as simple and as clear uh, as possible. You can name this uh, by double-clicking over here, uh, crate, 
um, this is our channel box and a lot of stuff goes in here all the translate rotate scale um, is in there um, this is our uh, history of things that we've done to the object and down here this is our layers we won't deal with layers right now but layers do come in very handy sometimes um, if the engine calls for it if you're doing a level so okay <clears throat> Now, here's our crate. We're going to um, we're going to go into Hypershade, and Hypershade is how uh, we make our um, how we add our textures. And one thing that's great about Maya, and I say that sarcastic, he, he said sarcastically, as they would say in Archer, is uh, there are so many. Um, um, menus that sometimes you lose something that you want and you have to go searching. Um, that's why the shelf is very, very handy. There's always one that's a custom shelf for all the tools that you use uh, frequently. These are just a few of the tools. Um, so if you want to add something to your shelf, say I want to add Hypershade, and I have Hypershade over here selected, brings it up. Um, if I want to add something to it, you actually have to use this top menu. So I hold down Control and Shift. I go to wherever Hypershade is, and I select that. It'll bring it up. It keeps it selected like that so I can click on others. Um, but if I click off of it, then it'll go up there. If you have something on your shelf you don't want, you can just delete it. Or you can move it. If you hold down the middle mouse button, you can move it to a new location. I don't want two of them, so I'm going to delete that. Okay, so here's our hypershade. This is where we put together all of our textures. Um, uh, an example, I don't usually keep this one open because it's kind of unnecessary, um, but it is kind of nice to see what's going on. Over here is our nodes, uh, and you'll see if we, um, if we um, let's, let's start and see what we can do. So we're gonna create a new texture, um, new material or a shader. We're going to go into Create, Materials, and Lambert. And there we have our Lambert. Now you'll notice we have here um, our first nodes. And that's where the magic happens there. We're going to name this because a lot of times it can be confusing what's going on up there, just like naming layers in Photoshop. So, uh, And it's also good to signify that this is a texture because everything, all the nodes kind of exist in the ether with the same name. So if I were to put crate down there, since we already have crate over here, uh, it'd turn up with crate one. So I'm going to do crate underscore text. And uh, Maya doesn't like spaces. Photoshop accepts them. Maya doesn't like spaces, so you have to use an underscore. So I have our crate texture. Now, in order to add the, um, the texture in there, this is um, where we're going to add it. You could just change the color of the, the cube if you change this, but don't ever, we don't ever really have untextured objects in games. So we click on this one. It brings up a create node, a render node, and these are all the crazy things you can do. A lot of these are for um, film and other uh, multimedia. You can use a PSD file, but rarely are those ever used in games. So we click on File, which is going to be our general file. You'll notice that our, um, um, let me get rid of this. Um, you'll notice that, oh, I still haven't got rid of it. And I brought that up there by pressing Control A, by the way. That's our, um, our attribute editor. Um, this way, if I get rid of that, I have more space over here to look at our shader. So we have this added um, here. This is our file texture. It goes into color, um, our file node, and it goes into color. Uh, if we want to change it, um, we can click on this one. Um, this is where we'll add our texture. If I click on this one, you can see the basic node over here. You have all these things you can add to it. Transparency, ambient color, incandescence, bump mapping, which is normal mapping, essentially. 
uh, translucence. Uh, when you put a transparent texture in, it will generally uh, do it for you. You don't have to actually manually manipulate the nodes. Um, we'll go over here, we'll select our create texture. Uh, we'll locate our texture, create crate two is what it was, open, and we have it in there. You can see our crate texture right up there. You can change the sizes of these guys by clicking these guys, or you can even zoom in like that. Uh, this looks a little wacky. It gets out of place. You can also move these around. Really sweet. That's new as 2016 for Maya. You can uh, go to graph, input and output connections, and it will fix it up for you. OK, so to texture, put this texture onto this object. We have to first click on the object. Then with that selected, we go over to Create Text, right click, Apply Material to Selection. And there we have that. Now you'll notice we have um, a few little, uh, well, a lot of funky texturing on that. So we have to change that texture so it looks the way that we want it to look. In order to do this, we go into the UV Texture Editor, and you can bring up your um, pop-up menu. You can go over to Windows, and we go to Search for the Texture Editor. It's in Modeling Editors. And there it is. Now, I already have it on my shelf, so if you want to put it on your shelf, remember Control, Shift, Windows, Modeling Editors, UV Editor, and it'll pop up there. I don't want that there because I have it already. So I bring that up, and here's our wonderful editor. Here's a, a toolkit that's new, I think, as of 2019. Um, so we have this right here is the automatic texture uh, of the cube. Um, if you try to go in here and move these guys around, they're going to be all connected, and that's not exactly what we want. Um, there's various ways of, of texturing an object. And generally, when you apply a texture, you always project a texture map onto something. Um, I'm just going to show you here quickly um, something about these guys. So if I click over here and I click Edge, you'll notice I can move that around. It wiggles. Um, and we want to cut that. So we want to cut that texture or that edge, and it will make them separate. In every uh, vertex, you'll have, uh, if there's a texture applied to it, a UV mapping, you can have uh, UVs applied to it. You can have them all be the same and have them linked together, or they can be separate. Um, so that's like each face will have their own uh, vertex and their own set of UVs. Later on, you'll find out you can have multiple sets of UVs that's really going to bake your noodle, as I say, in, um, in the matrix. But uh, we're not going to deal with that right now. So if I go over to uh, face, I should be able to click on that one face and move it around independently. If I were to click on this one, you'll see that it's moving around still uh, contained. There's a couple ways that we could do this. We could go over here, select edge. And I did that by pressing the right mouse button. That one that one, that one, and that one. And I can go to cut. Now, if I went to face, all these guys are going to be separate. I could bring them all up here. You also notice that it this has the move tool. When you're navigating around the UV editor, this is like a 2D version of what we're looking at um, in, in our main viewport. Uh, you can also uh, rotate if you press E. You can also scale if you press R and select if you press Q. So there are all of our textures there. Uh, we can also select all of them with that marquee tool. We can move it over here and scale this guy up. And we essentially have our crate over there, but you'll notice that all of these guys are a little funky. Um, Got to be picky if you're you're making objects. So those all have to be in the right spot. Now I can also I could press F12 um, 
for selecting the UVs. And um, that's something we're going to look into in a second. Um, and I can select all of these UVs, and then I can move them to this grid snap. I can do that by holding down X and moving it to that. But you'll notice that all of them move together. This is called retaining component spacing. And sometimes you want it on, sometimes you don't. A lot of times um, it's really not where you want it to be. Uh, so you can turn that off by going to move snap settings. And now this will change it in Maya, but we want it actually in here as two versions of the tool settings. So I just clicked on the UV texture editor and uh, then it brings up this other one and retain component spacing is there too. <coughs> That's finally off, no longer bothering us. Hold down X, now they all go in one spot. I can select these guys here, hold down X, they're all in one spot, just like that, like that, and like that, and it looks gorgeous. Okay, so there's our crate right there. It looks fantastic. Um, another thing that I, uh, method of uh, texturing that I want to show you, I'm going to duplicate that object with Control D, is um, a lot of times you will um, just texture one side to an object. So, and we'll go over this a lot more in the UV editing. Um, but I just want to show some basics of how to texture something. Um, before that, um, component mode and non-component mode, component mode on and off. Component mode off is when you're just editing the full object. Uh, when component mode is on, you can go into the object. There are some actions that you can do to objects that can only be done when you're out of component mode. And some you um, and some you can do both, and some, you know, etc. So right now I have faces selected. Um, I can change the faces. I can change the selection. I think people use some over here. I just don't use them because I use the key commands because they are much easier uh, in my mind. The nine F nine is your vertex mode. You can select uh, a number of vertices. Uh, if you click one, you can add one with shift, but that will invert it too. You can uh, add with, sh uh, if you hold down shift and control, you can take away if you hold down uh, control. So, and then if I go to edges, and that's F10, I can select independent edges and I can move them around. Um, and I can press F11, and that will do faces. I can move those guys around. And F12 is just selecting UVs. Nothing you can move around over here. You have to be in your UV editor in order to do that. So you'll also notice when you're moving things, there are these axes. This is the Y axis, uh, and you can see down here, Y is up, um, and Z is forward, and X is in that direction over there, ways. Um, it'll move around, uh, very handy. Um, if you hold on to the middle, you can move it around. You never really know where it's going to move it. Um, good to have some control. You can hold on to one axis by clicking that. These guys here are selecting more than one axis at a time. Uh, so if I held onto this one, it would be Y and Z at the same time. That one, same time. This one at the same time. Very handy to know what exactly you're selecting. OK, so I was going to get to the other uh, form of texturing. Um, you can also. Uh, with a, a mail script that I'll show you, you can copy and paste um, faces. I learned that from a guy over at LucasArts, and it's extremely handy. 
Um, <clears throat> this is projection mapping. So I have our object here. I go into UVs and I select automatic. There's also best plane, camera based, um, but we, we'd have to, um, I'll show that later. We're just gonna choose automatic. Um, we get a bunch of these guys. I know there's ways of modifying it, uh, moving it around, but uh, it just doesn't matter to me at the moment. Um, we can get out of that by pressing W, which is the move tool. Make sure we're out of component mode. So we're back to that, but if we bring up our UV editor, you'll notice things look a little differently. It's just textured. It just put all of those individual squares over there. Go to our face. Now we do the same thing like we did before. I'm going to select our UVs, right clicking, select those UVs, hold down X, move it down there, select UVs, X, X, you know, that's there. And there we go. And we have our second crate right over there. All right. Lovely, lovely crates. Um, all right, so that's um, just really, really basic texture mapping. And um, uh, other videos will go into more depth about texture mapping and the wonderful, uh, amazing effects that you can get with it. Thanks for watching.